Welcome back to our channel. In this breaking news, wildfire that forced evacuation of Jasper National Park is now within 12 kilometers of town site. At least 10,000 residents and visitors forced to evacuate overnight. An encroaching wildfire that forced thousands of people to flee the community of Jasper overnight is now burning 12 kilometers south of the Alberta mountain town as shifting winds threaten to fan the flames. Government officials say at least 10,000 residents and visitors were forced to evacuate from Jasper National Park after a wildfire moved dangerously close to the town site late Monday night. With little notice, people were forced to flee west over mountain roads into British Columbia through darkness, soot, and ash. The evacuation is considered ongoing with some visitors still emerging from the mountain backcountry. Parks Canada continues to battle multiple wildfires in the park in what it described as an evolving and dynamic situation. Swift winds and scorching temperatures threaten to create volatile conditions on the front line. One fire is approximately 12 kilometers south of Jasper on both sides of the river, and wind may exacerbate the situation. Mike Ellis, Alberta's Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Services, said during a news conference Tuesday. Provincial officials are working closely with Municipal and Parks Canada officials to help contain the fire and manage the evacuation, Ellis said. Hospitals and long-term care facilities in Jasper have been evacuated, and RCMP officers have been knocking on doors to ensure residents under evacuation have left their homes. Ellis urged evacuees to abide by instructions from emergency officials and register with provincial emergency evacuation centers. Wildfire directions can change quickly, and the situations are often rapidly evolving, Ellis said. Christy Tucker with Alberta Wildfire said the danger across the province remains extreme. Following weeks of parched weather and scorching heat, a cold front moving in from the west will create volatile weather for crews across the province, Tucker said. The winds are going to shift, she said. This will change the intensity of several of the wildfires in Alberta, as well as the direction that they may be moving. Katie Ellsworth, a fire management officer with Parks Canada, said sprinklers and other protection systems are being installed on critical infrastructure. Helicopter crews are dousing the flames from the sky and helping to evacuate people still stranded in the backcountry. If you have a way of contacting those in the backcountry, they should travel to reach a trailhead and are directed to evacuate. Ellsworth told a news conference Tuesday. She said Parks Canada has mobilized more resources to the area on Tuesday. Alberta wildfire crews are also being dispatched. Officials said lightning is likely the cause of the fire threatening Jasper. As orders to leave were issued overnight, highways out of the mountain community soon became jammed with traffic. The evacuation alert was sent just after 10 p.m. MT, the municipality of Jasper, declared a state of emergency shortly after. Park and town officials scrambled to clear up traffic gridlock, find fuel for vehicles, and help vulnerable people get to safety, while also marshalling resources to battle the fires. Canadian National Railway has suspended rail service through Jasper National Park, CN said in a statement. Crews are working to inspect and protect track infrastructure, but no track damage has been reported, the company said. CN said Trident, one of its firefighting trains, arrived in Jasper early Tuesday. Alberta Emergency Alert initially said residents had to flee because the fire was five hours from the Jasper town site, but an hour later corrected that to say people had five hours to get out, meaning they had to be out by 3 a.m. MT Tuesday. Ellis said he and Premier Danielle Smith have spoken about the confusion around the evacuation order. He said the information came from the municipality and that the province will be following up with municipal officials to understand what happened and prevent similar issues in the future. I think there were a lot of people who were scared, he said, and I know that when myself and the Premier discussed it late, late last night, we were of course concerned as to what was happening in the town of Jasper and what, indeed, was the risk. It was a long, anxious night on the road as vehicles clogged routes out of the community. Stephanie Gertz, who was visiting on a family vacation from Ontario, woke to the alert on her phone. She and her husband scrambled to wake their two young children and pack their belongings. Gortz said her family attempted to flee west, but were redirected east by emergency officials and drove through the fire zone where roaring flames were visible. It was absolutely shocking. We didn't realize how close it was to Jasper, she said. When we were stopped, there was tons of cars behind us and really realizing how close those cars had been to that fire, 
there's a much larger fire south of us. I can't imagine how that's going to impact Jasper. She said her family was heading toward Canmore, east of Banff, but with traffic clogging the highways, they didn't expect they would make the drive in one night. I don't think we're going to get there, she said. Our kids didn't fall asleep until 3.30 because they were just too anxious with the fire. So were we. Jessica Jackson, her husband and two young children, six and three, fled their home in Jasper overnight. She said it took them two hours to drive the three blocks from their home to the highway as vehicles clogged local streets and smoke choked the sky. I was getting my kids ready for bed and getting teeth brushed, she recalled. I looked out the window and there was dark, fresh smoke billowing in the air. Ash was falling and at that point, we just knew we had to start getting packed. Jackson and her family made their way to Valamount, where they spent the night parked on a friend's property, sleeping in their camping trailer. It was a late, late night last night, but we're just grateful to be safe and that our family's together. In B.C., the province scrambled to find accommodation for evacuees. B.C. will do everything we can to provide safe refuge for evacuees from Jasper and are working as quickly as possible to coordinate routes and arrange host communities on our side of the border. Bowen Ma, BC's Minister for Emergency Management, said in a post on the social media site X. A welcome center set up at a community hall in the BC village of Valamount had reached capacity by 4.30 a.m. Valamount has limited services and cannot accommodate more evacuees at the community hall. A social media post from the municipality of Jasper read, If you are on the road, please drive carefully and stop and get some rest as needed. This is an evolving emergency situation. Please be patient and be safe. We will provide more information as it becomes available. In Grande Prairie, a reception center at Bonnet's Energy Center was to open at 9 a.m. Tuesday. In Calgary, a reception center at the Shoulders Athletic Park will open at 11 a.m. The city of Edmonton is also accepting evacuees at Kennedale site, building number two, at 12814 58th Saint, starting at 2 p.m. Tuesday. Services will include coordination of lodging and funding for food, water, clothing, and hygiene items, pet daycare, and health care. Support will be available 24 hours a day, the city said.